All right. Now, these style pressure cookers also use a pressure weight. You can see that it has three values, 5, 10, 15. We want the 15 because that's 15 PSI. We have our gauge. Now, these gauges of mine are a bit old. And as you use your pressure cooker, the gauges will usually get a little bit off. So you can see this one's actually starting at about 3. And then when it's up to pressure, it'll be actually right about here. That'll actually be 15 PSI, even though it reads high. So you have to kind of pay attention. And you can always replace these. It's not too hard. But you also see I don't have any glass, but I'll tell you why. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this other one up and load it up. And then uh, we'll come back and I'll, we'll start cooking them. You can see that the first pressure cooker that's on the, uh, the main burner has come up to temperature. And like I, as I said, it's actually reading up around 18 when it's actually 15. So that's how, you know. The one over here, obviously, because it's on a smaller burner, it's going to take about an extra half hour to uh, come up to pressure. You see it's only about 10 PSI. Now usually what you want to do is as it's coming up, when it gets to about 10 PSI, you want to give the wig just a little bit of tap to loosen it up because you might have a little bit of hard water in there or uh, you know, some little bit of pressure that's going to have a little hard time because sometimes if you don't do that, it'll go all the way up to like 20 PSI almost into the caution zone and then it'll get a little bit of pop and uh, rattle off a ways. Now you can see as these rattle, it's releasing some steam at a, uh, a certain rate. And we're gonna let these cook for a total of four hours. Now it sounds like a long amount of time, but when you have a pressure cooker completely full of grain, it's gonna take some time for the heat to get all the way to the center of the bags. Um, I like to tell people that don't know that's what's going on when I do this that uh, come inside my house that I, uh, I raise cobras and it sounds like a bunch of snakes rattling. But uh, when it gets to about close to the uh, pressure you'll start hearing a slight bit of hissing. Um, usually if you don't you can tap the, uh, the weight. I don't know if you can hear it over the other one. It's going a little bit I can tell. So I'm going to let this stay on high for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. And it'll start picking up rattling more and more consistently to the point where it's just rattling and rattling. Then I'll come in, I'll reduce the heat to uh, medium high, which is about 7 on my stove. And that'll it'll bring it down to where it only rattles about uh, a couple times a minute. And that's where you want to keep it, about uh, two, three times of a little bit of rattling every minute. And so as the, uh, the four hour time goes on, you're going to bring the temperature down progressively all the way till it gets down to uh, me probably medium low, I guess. It's uh, number three on mine. And that's usually where it stays. And it takes about two hours to get to that point. But once you get to that, a uh, point where you only need that much flame to keep it consistent, it'll uh, cook the remaining two hours without having to add any extra heat. If it, obviously, if it's not rattling at all, you can turn the heat up and bring it back up to where it needs to be, then bring it, you know, slowly down over time. You'll get some practice with your stove, because, you know, every stove's a little different, and uh, about when you need to bring it down. So I'm going to go ahead, let that go for a little bit. And I'll come back later and get this thing going. And so uh, after four hours, I'll show you what we do to properly cool this off. Because if we cool it off too fast, we're going to actually explode the bags on the inside and rupture the plastic. That will make them useless. So I'll show you how to do that when we come back. Well, it's late at night, and it's been four hours, so this pressure cooker over here is ready to uh, go on its cool down. 
This one still has about 20 minutes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to reduce the flame till it's just coming over the lip of the, uh, the top. Which is about two on my uh, stove. And also, we're going to take a couple spare blankets and just put it right on the top. Now you don't want the blankets to drape over the sides any because then it becomes a fire hazard. Now if you remember what I said about uh, having no glass in my gauges, when you do this, because the gauges that these come with is actually made with soft glass and the glass will actually warp and so uh, it's gonna, probably going to do that to you too so you can either kind of I don't want to say smash it out but carefully uh, maybe take a screwdriver and a hammer and crack it and then a pair of needle nose pliers and break the rest of it out the gauge is pretty tough so you're not going to damage that but uh, either that or it might even be considered uh, to order a uh, gauge with a uh, some hard glass in it or what's called a uh, broiler snook which will extend it and make it kind of come out over here that's actually probably the best situation you could do for that so yeah so uh, you see if you can find a broiler snook and so now this is going to be about another hour before it's cooled down to the point where we want it and it has to cool down slowly that's why we still have the fire underneath of it because if we don't the pressure is going to escape the bags too fast where it ruptures the plastic inside so we can't have that and you can see that you know I started this at 10 in the morning and I took a couple hours break for to make dinner so I could have you know the stove to use and now it's almost 11 o'clock at night so this is an, an all-day thing um, the sooner you can get the bags into the pressure cooker the better because as they sit out on the counter they'll lose heat and then you have to obviously take more heat to bring it up to temperature I know I said before that you want it to rattle about once or twice every minute you get good at calibrating you can get it where it's just very on the edge and you can see it's this hasn't rattled uh, too often if I yeah, give it a slight smack on it, it'll rattle though that way you kind of keep the, the annoyance of the rattle down as much as you can because it uh, it might grind on you after a while so I'm gonna let this one cool down and do the same thing to this one when my uh, timer goes off and it'll be about an hour to an hour and a half till we can look back and see that the gauge has uh, zeroed now if it's getting to a point about an hour and you see that the gauge is still about 5 psi or so you can go ahead and turn the burner all the way down to low to uh, help drop it off a little faster as long as the pressure's down uh, mostly uh, cooling it off a little faster won't hurt, uh, do much of a problem so I'm going to let these cool down and then we're going to get to the point where we inoculate them with our liquid cultures alright we'll be back All right, it's been over 36 hours since we've cooked these pressure cookers and the bags of grain inside are ready to be taken out. Now, if you need some more time, you can let the bags sit in the pressure cooker for really up to a week and they'll still be good as long as you don't take the valve off or open it up. It'll stay sterilized and keep its vacuum seal on the inside. So the first thing we're going to do is wipe the top lip of these with alcohol and around the cooker so we get some of this dust that's been kind of settled on there the past couple days. I like to kind of wipe around the rim because that's where we're going to open it. And you can see they got you know a little bit of old grease and stuff just from being on the stove. That won't hurt it. All 
right, wipe it around. You see that I make sure there's no dirty dishes in the sink. You always want to do that when you're doing lab work. Also, too, if I haven't mentioned, you always want to be wearing clean clothes from the dryer. You always want to be recently showered as well. You don't want to get dirty at all when you're doing lab work. You don't want to use any kind of talcum powders or anything of that sort because any of the dust from that will get into your grow. Um, so, you see here I have two shallow, nice and sturdy Sterilite tubs with uh, locking clips on them. And we're going to first release any pressure might be in these. You might hear a little bit of a hiss or whatnot. And then we're going to start taking these off. Now, you may find that you have to go around to find one of the uh, screw downs that's not as tight as the others, because they will be hard to get off. I'm going to go ahead and loosen both. If you really have to, you can use a pair of pliers to free it too. If for some reason the pressure cooker is still slightly warm, which you know you obviously want it to completely cool down, you'll notice that you'll have a hard time even getting the lid to pop open. You'll have to take a butter knife and kind of break the seal. Because remember, these are metal to metal seals. So you want to be careful. All right, now we're going to take these tubs and set the lid off to the side. I got a spray bottle full of alcohol, the same 91% isopropyl, and I'm going to sanitize the inside of these tubs one at a time. We're going to take this top off, and I set the lid on the sink. That's a safe place to put it. Now you can see here, remember how high the bags were up? Now they've been squished down quite a bit. So we can go ahead and take the weight out. Carefully take the pizza pan out. And then with alcohol hands, I'm gonna take four of these bags and put them in one bin. Now, you might see that they're a little difficult to get out. And notice how vacuum sealed they are. With the, see how the top flat is nice and pressed together? And I usually get your hand underneath and a thumb on top. If you gotta use two hands, that's good. What you don't wanna do is get your fingers close to the lip of the opening of the bag. Dig down here. You might have to use some finesse to get in between a bag and pull it up. I also try to face the openings into each other. I'm going to spray this lid down with alcohol too to sanitize it. And now we've created a decently sanitary environment that we can keep the bags in until we're ready to use them. So I'm going to do this again. Get the last remaining two bags out of this one. You can see the ones on the bottom are especially vacuum sealed because of all the weight. Notice too how much water we have left in the pressure cooker. You can see there's probably still about, oh, at least a quarter inch of water. If it looks like it's getting dry at the bottom, you definitely need to add more if you haven't added your seventh eighths of an inch. Also too, if it's got dry at the bottom, that's a sign that possibly you have some leakage around your pressure cooker. You always want to check to see if there's extra steam.